In this video, I want to talk about Routes Law, but in order to understand Routes Law, you first have to understand vapor pressure. So vapor pressure is a pressure that is present at the surface of a liquid. And you can see right here, I've drawn a beaker full of a liquid, and the surface of the liquid is represented by this black wavy line up here. These red dots are supposed to represent individual molecules that make up the liquid. And you can sort of see what's happening at the surface here. Some of the red dots are leaving the liquid and coming out here, while others are coming out from here back into the liquid. So every time a red dot leaves, that represents a molecule of this liquid evaporating. And now it's a vapor molecule out here. And every time one of the vapor molecules returns to the liquid, that is condensation. This is happening many, many times per second at the surface of this liquid. And you can imagine all of this bouncing around of molecules up here as vapor is going to create a pressure. And we call that the vapor pressure. So what Routes Law says is that if you add in a non-volatile solute, that's what these green dots are, and a non-volatile solute is simply something that we dissolve into this solution that can't evaporate at the surface like the red dots can, then you lower the vapor pressure. And the reason for this is that we've essentially crowded out the surface of the solution and the red dots now have a harder time evaporating and creating this vapor pressure that we saw before. So whenever you dissolve a non-volatile solute into a pure solvent, you lower the vapor pressure. That's Routes Law. So Routes Law mathematically says that the vapor pressure of the solution, P solution, is equal to X solvent, or the mole fraction of the solvent, times P solvent, or the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. So let's think about this mathematically with a couple examples. So down here, I have an example where we're calculating P solution, or the vapor pressure of a solution, and you can see our X solvent here was one. That means the mole fraction of the solvent is one. That's a situation like this, where our solution is entirely made up by a pure solvent. In other words, our solution is a pure solvent, so they're really the same thing. So we would expect to have the same vapor pressure for our solution as we did for our pure solvent, and that's the case. 1 times 50 bar is 50 bar. So the solution and the solvent have the same vapor pressure. But what if the mole fraction of the solvent is not 1? Well, if we decrease it down to 0.5, we may have a situation that looks something like this, where now these red dots, the pure solvent, only represents half of the molecules in the solution. The mole fraction went down to 0.5. And now this non-volatile green solute makes up the other 0.5 of the mole fraction. Well, in this case, when we decrease the mole fraction by half, guess what happens to the vapor pressure of the overall solution? It decreases proportionally by one half. Now when we multiply 0.5 by 50, we go down to 25 bar. So when you decrease the mole fraction of the solvent, the vapor pressure of the solution decreases proportionally as well. So let's do an example problem. 80 grams of sucrose, and I've got the molecular formula of sucrose right here, were dissolved in 100 milliliters of water. What is the expected vapor pressure of the solution at 25 degrees Celsius? So this is clearly a Routes Law problem because we're dissolving a solute into a solvent, water, and we're asked about vapor pressure. So in order to solve this problem, we're gonna have to use Routes Law's equation. And that says that the vapor pressure of this overall solution, which is what they asked for, is gonna be equal to the mole fraction of the solvent. And in this case, water is our solvent, sucrose is our solute. And then we're gonna multiply that by the vapor pressure of the pure solvent or pure water. So in order to solve this problem, we need these two things right here. The mole fraction of the solvent and the vapor pressure of the pure solvent so that we can solve for the vapor pressure of the overall solution. So the vapor pressure of pure water at 25 degrees Celsius is something that you can look up on a table and you should find that it's 0.0317 bar. So this is what our vapor pressure of the pure solvent is at this temperature. So really all we need now is the mole fraction of the solvent. And really the mole fraction of the solvent is the mole fraction of water. And this is gonna be defined as the moles of water over the total moles of the solution. In other words, moles of water over moles of water plus moles of sucrose. So first I found moles of water, and to do this I needed the density of water, which is one gram per milliliter. So since we had 100 milliliters, we know that we have 100 grams of water, 
Then I simply converted 100 grams of water to moles of water by dividing by water's molecular weight and I got 5.56 moles of water. So then I went ahead and did the same thing for moles of sucrose. I found we had 80 grams of sucrose to begin with, divided that by sucrose's molecular weight, and I saw that we had 0.234 moles of sucrose. So now I was ready to compute my mole fraction for water, which again is moles of water, 5.56, over total moles, 5.56 plus 0.234, and then I multiplied that by the vapor pressure of our pure solvent, which I knew was 0.0317, and I got my final answer of 0.0304 bar. So let's think about what happened here. Our mole fraction of water was 0.96 roughly. That means that approximately 0.96 or 96% of this solution was made up by moles of water. So we would expect that if a solution made up of 100% moles of water had a vapor pressure of 0.0317 bar, then a solution made up of about 96% moles of water would have a total vapor pressure of about 96% of 0.0317, which is about what 0.0304 bar is. So I really hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, please hit that thumbs up button, share it with a friend, and I'll see you guys in the next one.